um, hopefully we'll have some good information for everybody and superintendent will be here shortly to get us going. Kind of wish I knew some clean jokes. I just don't have any off the top of my head right at the moment. But growing growing up in the Bitterroot, you don't hear too many good clean ones anyway. Good morning, Senator Temple. How are you today? Good. <laughs> All right, thanks, Marla, for bailing me out. So Many of you may have heard this. We'll see how many actually know it. Why do, <laughs> why do you never see a buffalo hiding in a tree? No idea. They're just too good at it. All right. Superintendent's here to bail me out. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Good morning, Superintendent. Good morning. What a beautiful Wednesday across our state. Uh, it's good to see that we've got so many on the screen at this point. Um, I'm sure you've already introduced yourself, Chris. A little bit. I was trying to tell some clean jokes, so. <laughs> clean ones. Excellent. <laughs> Appreciate that. So just wanted to share with everybody, thank you for spending time with us. Um, it is exceedingly important that we connect. And I believe that's what the data task force is about. It's making sure that we connect, not just because we're government, but to connect because we have purpose. Coming out of the pandemic, understanding that uh, the relationships that we have with each other can be done more efficiently, can be done in a manner that impacts our students, not just our students, but those great teachers that deliver the education in our classrooms. So from government to other government, I thank you. The other part of this is we do have a mission with data modernization that I believe um, Chris will get a little bit more into. Um, Zam, good to see you. I appreciate you. We have done a lot of work in this realm, and I mean, it is historic that the agency was giving uh, $13, 13 million dollars to aid in this relationship building with our schools in data and in the flow of data, having it be more efficient, and as I said, to impact learning and our students. So I welcome you. Um, I wish you all the best after this meeting. There will also be another one because can't leave a meeting without planning for another one in the future as we continue our good work and our good work together. So with that, Chris, I'm gonna turn the meeting back to you. Wonderful, thank you, Superintendent. Um, <clears throat> I will introduce myself uh, at this point in time. My name is Chris Sinrud. Uh, Christopher is fine. I have uh, been with OPI almost four months now, so uh, I've learned a little bit. I've learned a lot, and I've learned all kinds of different things that uh, we can and, and should be able to do here in the, in the distant future. Uh, I came from uh, Lewis and Clark County in the city of Helena in the IT department, worked there for over 20 years, 
well, actually exactly 20 years, I should say, and uh, looked at the opportunity here at OPI and thought it'd be a wonderful chance to give back to the state and the community. So um, I've done everything from build networks, rope software, um, actually went to school with Bitsy here, one of our PMs, and have uh, made some wonderful relationships here in Helena. Um, with that, I will get started right into the modernization presentation that I have, and we'll run through that. Uh, can everyone see my screen? No. No, we cannot. Now we're getting it. Now we got it? Yep. All right, good. Uh, so our data modernization project, um, when I first got here, that, of course, was the very first thing that was on my on my task list to do was get up to speed with the things that were going on and where we were with this and proceed uh, down the path that had, in some cases, been uh, figured out. And in other cases, we needed to try to figure out where we needed to go. And so we brought on uh, Zam, who you'll hear from a little bit later. Uh, as one of our project managers. Uh, he currently is a project manager on our uh, licensure project, and he'll give us an update on that. Uh, let's see, here we go. So uh, everyone knows we have uh, $13.5 million of CARES and ARPA funding uh, that was appropriated by the legislature. Uh, we have... Um, looked at the different areas that we needed to improve upon from a modernization standpoint and those are up on the right quarter of this slide we have uh, student management fiscal management educator management and digital management and those numbers down below are our estimates in in regard to what we project would be spent in those areas for improvement some of those funds have already been um, obligated at this point in time, and others are to be determined uh, here within the next three months as to where those monies will go. Part of our data modernization, data system modernization goals were to reduce the number of data systems and processes. We have over 70 systems that we have to deal with on a daily basis. Uh, that makes it quite the challenge for us as well as the field. Uh, to make sure that our data is good, clean, accurate, and is usable in a form that we can make some intelligent and in, in distinct decisions on how we need to do things. Um, part of that uh, goal is to automate the workflow, make things a lot easier for everyone to put the data in and, and receive the data out, and also take into account the security and clean up the user experience. Uh, the other parts of that are enhancing the analytics that I just kind of spoke about to help us make better decisions, identify risks, and to improve our systems across the state so we can have better impacts and uh, on our students and our educators and help them to make very good sound decisions. Um, from the financial standpoint, the financial contributions, the almost three and a half million dollars, 13 and a half million dollars, we have um, part of that is from ESSER II funding, which we need to have $8 million obligated by the end of September next year. And then the ESSER III obligation of 5.4 million by the end of the following year. Any questions so far? Sorry, I'll move you around here so I can see everyone. Okay. So our current objectives and, and uh, activities. Um, one of the things we were looking at from this modernization project is to make sure that we're trying to slim down our duplication of data. Uh, we have many systems where we have uh, duplication of data and it's really tedious, time consuming for everyone to handle that and input that information. Many of you out there uh, in the field that have had to deal with this know exactly the problems that you've seen. Um, 
with that work. Uh, sometimes it can be inaccurate. Sometimes it can be a challenge just to get the time to put it in. And so we're taking those things into account. We want to simplify and automate a lot of the systems so they are easier to use. Uh, the other thing that we really are trying to focus on is sustainability. We know once we have built or figured out how we need to design and, and get these systems updated, we need to be able to keep track of those for the long term and not have those cost us normal delay. And so that's going to be one of our big challenges that we have to work on. Um, the other thing that we're looking at and we will be involving the field in is um, our ongoing improvement and satisfaction. We want this system to be in these systems to be much easier for you to utilize and use as well as for our staff. So that makes it faster for us to get the data, actually qualify the data, make sure everything is good, and then produce the data that we can utilize to make good sound decisions. So current activities that we have, now we have the Teach Montana system or TMT, we call it. Um, that was an um, update from our current licensure system uh, that we did have. This system went live in June and has been functioning quite well. And Zam will run through that here in a little bit to give us some more update on that. Uh, the other activities that we're looking that we're utilize or doing right now are our infinite campus system, which is our SIS. Um, many of our, our schools are utilizing that system, um, looking at improving and expanding the capabilities of that system um, to help consolidate some of our current applications that we have. And we have been uh, looking in, into that since I got here. Uh, the other part of this is obviously PowerSchool. That's one of the big, big players out there. And we know that a lot of the big schools utilize that system. And how can we better serve that system and those data elements in order to get those into the current infinite campus system? And we have some great ideas on how do we can do that. And we think we could utilize some funds from the data modernization project bank to get those things accomplished. Uh, currently, we have an RFP out for an assessment of our uh, systems that we currently have in place and what we're utilizing. So what this is going to do is take a complete inventory of the systems that we have, analyze where our data is coming from, where it, what systems is put into, what those system ties are, and how we can try to clean up and consolidate some of those systems and what projects would be uh, sensible with the monies that we have in order to improve those systems and consolidate. Um, along with that RFP, that will help give us a direction and a project plan for a system integrator. So one of the other uh, items that we have been working on or one of the other areas that we've been working on, and Bitsy will attest to this here in a little bit as well, is our data um, from the data modernization standpoint is the single sign-on. And what that allowed us to do and what we heard from the field is that many of our users were really um, not happy that they had to sign into every different system that we had in order to put in the data that they had to. And so what we came up with was this idea of having a portal where we could sign in one time that would link those users to the systems that they have access to or should have access to. And they wouldn't necessarily have to log into those systems a second, third, fourth, fifth time. Uh, that has been really well received and we have some information in regard to that. Um, from a digital infrastructure standpoint, the other thing that we have been looking at has been uh, the data lake concept. And what that is, is where we would put all of our systems into one space, if you will, uh, allowing them to talk to each other and to share data across the board. Um, it's kind of a new concept in regard to how that system actually would work. We wouldn't necessarily have applications that we um, have to build other than um, interfaces to go get the data and pull the data out that we need. So we're looking at that from that standpoint. And there's a couple of different 
avenues that we could take in that approach that we could possibly utilize. Um, any questions so far? Chris, if I could just interject, I do know we have some policymakers on, and I thank you for your service and your time with us today. Mm -hmm. That second column of student uh, information system, the SIS, uh, in a reflection across the United States, some states have one that they demand other districts to be able to use. Uh, the Office of Public Instruction has had a relationship with the vendor Infinite Campus, and there are other SISs across our state as well. Because we are a local control state, um, it would be challenging if we were to demand all of our districts to be able to have one single system. Um, it would be challenging for them. It would be professional development. There would be a lot of things that would be involved. So that is why the discussion with these two vendors of Power School and Infinite Campus are important to see how we can toggle together and communicate together to have less impact to our customers, our schools. The other part I'd like to share on the digital infrastructure column and a big shout out to Bitsy. Bitsy has been working at the agency through school nutrition to be able to put more efficiency into how we, dis we talk to USDA and to our school nutrition folks in the field. So the single sign-on was something that we discussed pre-pandemic, and then it just seemed to be a perfect fit since we already had uh, the contract with Bitsy and uh, the team Paraton to be able to add this into a larger framework uh, where these apps can come in very simple and it's more efficient for the user at the other end. The other part of that digital infrastructure is making sure that we are compatible with what the state is doing. So yes, as an elected, I am outside of what uh, the governor's office might request with the Department of Administration, but we're very eager and trying to understand what the state is doing so that quite possibly we can be a partner in a unified system. That also then means that the cost to the taxpayer may be less uh, if there is some way that we can use and incorporate the data lake platform or anything dealing with the snowflake technology. So we are in collaboration uh, with our state CIO uh, and making sure that the OPI has the best way to integrate the opportunity that the uh, legislature gave us through the ARPA and ESSER dollars. So thank you legislators, I appreciate that. And if there's anything, Chris, you wanted to add more to what I just said, please. If not, I don't want to impede your meeting. Thank you, Superintendent, I appreciate the help. All right, so any other questions at this point? Okay, we'll continue on here a little bit. So we have our, uh, Data modernization core activities. Right now we're looking at, we are uh, in the stages of the RFP for the assessment of our systems. We're right in the middle of that. Um, Zam was key in helping build that RFP out, um, getting questions answered and whatnot. The end of the week will be the final, the finale of those questions. And um, these are actually underneath the deliverables there for uh, August and October of this year. The uh, We'll run through those RFPs here at the end of this month, and we are expecting to um, uh, get into contract negotiations with the vendor to get those services taken care of. That will be one of the top uh, priorities of what I have to do here within the next couple of weeks and month. Um, to make sure that we have chosen a, a good solid vendor that can come in, assess our systems. What that assessment is going to do is give us a roadmap and a cost model for system implementation, which is critical to the use of those funds and how we build our system. Um, that goes back to the um, items of obviously our cost and then the sustainability of that system, whatever that may be over the long haul. So along with that, 
uh, that's going to be a three month effort that we're expecting. Um, legislators, we should um, be able to come out of that, or we will be able to come out of that with a plan for the things that we need to do and budgetary numbers that are going to be more solid than what we currently have. And so that's what we're really excited about is to get that work underway and going. And um, that will also allow us to talk with the field over different aspects of the systems that they utilize. And this takes us back to the survey that we did this summer and the different systems that we receive feedback on that should be at the top of that priority list for modernization. So um, what we're expecting is to uh, get those plans in place. We will have the remainder of the, uh, currently we have $3 million that we have obligated at this point in time, uh, which we would have by the end of September next year, we would need to obligate another uh, four and a half to five million out of that to make sure that that's um, being utilized. And then those plans will carry over into the ESSER three funds, which would be the 5.4 million. So uh, with what we're expecting a final delivery of products by the end of uh, September of 2024. Um, any questions at this point on that? Okay. Hey, Chris and Sam, can I just uh, uh, add one thing in? in Absolutely. Um, just to give you an idea, uh, you know, Chris had alluded to the questions being um, uh, posed by the vendors. Uh, there has been strong interest in this RFP. Uh, we've had several vendors who have submitted over I'll say about 15 to 20 questions. Um, so that indicates that they're really thinking about this and they're really um, uh, you know, looking forward to uh, bidding on this uh, on this RFP. And uh, just today, we had one vendor who actually submitted 24 questions um, <laughs> this morning, which were all answered. So uh, just to give you an idea, uh, there is very strong interest and there is very strong experience within the vendors who are actually bidding on this or who would be bidding on this RFP. Thanks, Sam. Uh, the other the other aspects that are not written on these. Uh, on the presentation or in any of this documentation is uh, we've reached out to the state of Mississippi and the state of Maine who have gone through this process and they have some great ideas and and wonderful talent that they have um, utilized to build some of the systems that they're looking at um, for the, their long range goals. And really the nice thing that they have provided with some ideas in regard to sustainability and making sure that those systems are um, easily kept up to date and going over the long haul. So we're really excited about uh, talking in, in discussions with those states to see how they've done it, because that's going to give us some great ideas, uh, especially when we end up um, working with the system integrator to build these systems for down the road we go. So here's just a, a, another timeline um, that defines some of the, the areas a little bit better. Um, if you look down at the data vendor RFP, um, we were looking at that to be done in September. Um, that's actually moved out a little bit with uh, our requirements and everything to be analyzed and a vendor chosen. So the work will begin in October and that should go until the middle of February, um, hopefully a little bit less than that. So we can um, discuss these things during the legislative year and bring more detail and project updates up, up the hill. So we're really excited about some of the vendors that um, we are expecting to see and hear from and can't wait to see what their responses are. Any questions there? Okay. So the last slide is really kind of a budget shot of what we, snapshot of what we had determined what uh, the funds would, where the funds would be spent in the particular areas. This will be um, we'll put up against what our vendor has recommended so we can find that common ground of what we think we know and 
um, taking into account all the information that they have garnered through doing that analysis of our systems. Um, when you're talking 73 different systems, it's it's really, or more, it's really a challenge to make sure that uh, we have as much of an analysis done as possible to try to get that data laid out so our system integrator can work with us to build something that's clean and easy to use. And that's that's really what I'm excited about. Um, and that was what I really wanted to uh, express that my opportunity to be here and help do this is really, really going to be pretty cool um, from the long run and what our goals are. So are there any questions? You guys are pretty quiet. I'm not sure if this is good or not. But, okay. <laughs> Thanks for the thumbs up, Paul. I appreciate that. Okay. So with that, I'll stop sharing my screen and uh, we'll I'll introduce Zam. Uh, Zam Aldina has been uh, here longer than I have, ironically enough. Um, Bitsy's our long-termer, and we'll get to her here in a minute. Uh, Zam was hired uh, along with the Randa company to build our teacher uh, licensure system, so TMT as we call it. And I'll turn it over to Zam to let him describe exactly what we've been doing with that system and um, let you know what kind of results we've had so far since June. So with that, I'll turn it over to you, Sam. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. And uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for your time today. Um, I'm going to start sharing my screen. I do have a presentation here, uh, which I will be uh, putting up. So if you give me a moment, um, I will get that over to you. One second. Hold on. And if you could just let me know once you were able to see. It's good. Are we good? Okay, perfect, thank you. Um, before I begin, uh, thank you uh, once again, Chris, for the introduction. And so uh, I think I have met um, some of the um, uh, members here on the, in this meeting. I, um, I have been here for about over a year uh, working with um, the OPI on uh, the data modernization effort. Uh, specifically within licensure and doing the RFP, getting the RFP out there, doing the um, being involved in the vendor selection, as well as uh, the implementation with the vendor for uh, the TMT, uh, Educator Licensure System. Uh, just to also let you know, um, I've also worked with the state of Montana under uh, the Secretary of State. Um, so I'm very familiar with the environment. I actually lived in Montana. We had a, an incredible time while me and my family were there. Uh, love the state, love the people. Um, so I'm happy to, to be part of this uh, initiative. Uh, my background is ERP implementation with uh, states. And so I've worked with several other states over the last 10 year on modernization effort. And with ERP, um, a big component of that is the uh, data and the data centric uh, approach to uh, implementing this application. So within TMT, um, you know, for those who have, uh, have not been sort of previewed to um, some of the uh, core activities, um, there, were a there was a lot of activity that, and tasks that went into actually implementing the system. And so uh, without even going into the um, specifics, you know, this is very high level, um, you know, the, the type of activities. And these activities were both with the vendor Randa, who was a great partner of ours, as well as the OPI staff. And so their time to dedicate to be involved in this was very um, instrumental in the success in getting this uh, past, you know, in, into the finish line and then delivering for June 1st. Um, so, you know, these are some of the core activities that were, um, that uh, occurred during that time. And uh, this slide here, I, I wanted to show, uh, once again, at a very high level, all that work that went into where we are right now. And so uh, from November, uh, 2021 till June 2022, uh, you know, we were at tentative award implementation um, or deployment and then implementation. And so over the, you know, s several months, a lot of the work uh, that had happened is, is depicted here in this uh, slide. And this is where I just want to show 
you know, we're, we're, what it took to get to this point. Um, underneath the timelines is just our high level uh, architect of what TMT is. Um, and the reason why I wanted to show this is because as we move into data modernization, we are gonna be assessing what the current architect environment looks like and modernizing it so that we're gonna be decommissioning the MSYS database. Um, but for right now, due to um, technical you know, uh, restrictions, we actually still need to use the, the MSYS database on, in the background. Uh, so what that means is TMT and the application that Randa is using right now, which is a cloud application, uh, working very well is actually working alongside with the T with the MSYS database. Um, we do have the front end MSYS available to the licensure special specialist, and this is primarily because of uh, legacy applications that are still required and um, uh, need to be completed. And so, once that once the data modernization effort and deployment and solution is identified, then we will look at, you know, what does it take to decommission the MSYS database? But for right now, there is no, um, no visibility for any of the users, whether it's educator or OPI staff into the MSYS database. Everything really is going through TMT. And that's what you're seeing when you go into the TMT uh, cloud application. Benefits. Um, this is a, a big thing, a big area that we talked about prior to implementation, but now we are actually at that point of, you know, um, that we're in maintenance and support. And so, you know, these are the benefits that, you know, working with uh, the o OPI licensure staff and specialists, um, you know, this is what they've communicated to our team. And so from an IT support from the vendor, we do have an escalation queue. And so a, the support mechanism right now is for the educators and for the OPI staff. And so there is a, uh, there is a process in which you can submit issues. Um, and then there's a triage from the RANDA side, which would look at those issues, um, uh, respond to them or escalate them, uh, depending if they're technical in nature or if you require a more specialized type of uh, support mechanism. Um, so we definitely have that. And this is something that we've created or uh, built into the contract. And so in those contracts, we have service level agreements, um, including you know, high, medium, uh, low risk, and then identifying what those response rates or response time frames, as well as the resolution time frame. And so uh, currently right now, um, we haven't had any issues with the uh, support mechanism in place. Um, and with any implementation, you're going to have a high level, a uh, high number of issues and support that was going to be required. And we're seeing that, um, but we are attending to that uh, in a timely manner. So uh, we're, right now, that's a very helpful area after you know implementation, post-implementation. Uh, evaluation process. And so right now, the team is working uh, diligently to, um, to get to these uh, existing opening open and um, new applications and uh, there are legacy applications in place and I'll talk about a little bit about that in the next uh, slide um, but we have fully trained our staff and you know I, I've worked that we'll start trading on the new system as you see there which um, we do have a couple of modules which is the uh, um, legal module which still needs to be implemented. And uh, there was a dependency on some of the resources that we had in place to have the um, legal module in, in, you know, uh, operational. And so we are currently going through requirements gathering. We've completed that. And uh, Randa is working on the configuration for the legal uh, module. But for the most part, I would say the majority of all the users have been trained. Uh, and if they haven't, um, you know, we do have training um, uh, videos, as well as access to uh, RANDA resources for training if that's needed. But um, based on the information that I have and working with the OPI specialist, um, you know, they are well underway. It's been a couple months now since the implementation of this uh, application. One of the big areas within this application, we talked about this before, uh, prior to implementation is the analysis. And so there is a module for reporting and access to reporting, including dashboards. Um, you know, this, this is an area that once you implement 
it's going to take you know about a couple months and a couple iterations of going through the analysis and going through the reporting. It is a very user friendly reporting environment uh, that does not require any type of coding or technical knowledge. Really, it's it's being able to access the data in the manner which you know you can make decisions pretty quickly based on you know the ad hoc reporting that you have or even you know canned reporting that you want to build uh, within your uh, within your um, profile. Now the data is limited based on the roles. So depending on what your role is in the system will um, will determine the type of and level of data that you'll have access to. So that's one of the you know benefits that we have with the application is being able to control that. And then integration. Um, from an integration standpoint, like I talked about, the legal module is one that you know we're we're looking to um, uh, implement in, within the next uh, I would say four weeks. And then we also have the learning hub uh, that we're looking at right now and how to integrate that into the Randa system. Uh, Randa with other clients have used uh, APIs, which basically are bridges to existing applications that they can pull into their data. But you know, we really need to look at you know, how does the data fit within the TMT and within Randa's uh, database? Um, and once we determine that, you know, uh, linking the technology using an API, um, is pretty straightforward and, and they've done that with other clients um, and I'm confident that you know regards to the technology that we're using um, which would be decommissioned you know when we talk about data modernization that we can uh, integrate and so that brings me to the next point which is scalability and so um, being able to be scalable for future modules uh, applications and features is a big um, selling point and a big uh, benefit of using this TMT, TMT application, uh, not only on the reporting side, but also integrating with other applications, whether they're existing or newer applications that either uh, the school or the OPI um, would bring in, you know, either, you know, in the short term or the long term. So before going on to my next slide, is there, do we have any questions? No? Okay. So the current state and next steps. Um, I talked about, you know, the applications. Uh, so I wanted to get, uh, give everyone really a flavor of what, uh, what we're dealing with in terms of the, you know, the quantifiable uh, measurements here. And so from a legacy application on June 1st, we had over about 1100 uh, legacy applications that were in the system. And so um, right now, we are looking at 308. So definitely you can see the, the numbers that have gone down. A lot of that is attributed to the fact that there's an automated workflow and system messaging uh, status and the ease of actually using this system and, and um, managing those legacy applications. Now, out of those 308, we have 283, which are missing data to complete. So basically, what that means is there is information that is dependent on the educator or user uh, of the uh, of the applicant or the applicant themselves that we're waiting for. And so once we have that information, the OPI specialist will be able to uh, complete and uh, confirm, authorize, and validate those uh, those applications to completion. So um, as you can see, there's a bit a uh, big discrepancy in the legacy applications on June 1st to where we are right now. And that's indicative of the automated and all the benefits of using TMT. And so the number of uh, complete applications since go live is seven, or close to 1800. And so this was as of last week. So I, I would think that we're probably above 1800 as we're talking right now. Um, this, this number is pretty remarkable considering we have about four uh, for uh, dedicated OPI re uh, resources for uh, completing applications. And so once again, this just highlights the benefits of using this application and the speed in which the applications really move through the system. Um, and there's various uh, factors and, and functionalities that really um, attest and attribute to you know, the, the, the automated workflow here. Maintenance and support, I really talked about that in the, uh, the previous uh, slide. Uh, right now, there is the email, there is phone. Um, there's also uh, on the TMT site, um, uh, a web form. So there's actually about three. There's three channels in which, you know, we can get a hold, um, we can contact, and we can manage our issues uh, through uh, Randa's uh, support system. 
Uh, reporting and analytics, I've talked about that, um, you know, that we're still going through to make sure that the environment is mature. And in order for it to be mature, it's, it's about training, it's about um, experiencing, uh, you know, and then going into the reports, being uh, familiar what the environment uh, is and the functionality behind that. And so um, right now we do have those dashboards. We have the ability to customize reports, but we also have the ability to have Randa assist in customizing any type of reports as we become a lot more familiar with, you know, accessing and using the, the system itself. Uh, it is, once again, very user-friendly. Um, sorry, it was- yeah, it looks like we have a question from Representative Punk. Oh, okay. Sorry, I, 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 I would happily wait till the end of this. I present this part of your presentation. It's about this part, but if you want to finish up, that's fine. Thank you, though. Thank you, uh, Mr. Sinner. I appreciate that. You're very welcome. Thanks, Chris. Sorry, sorry. Um, no problem. Yeah, uh, let me. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Yeah, I'm done yeah. here, and uh, we're still going to be on this page, so I'm not going to uh, get off this uh, this okay. slide. Here. So this is the last slide, but yeah, like I said, the reporting and analytics was um, one area, but. Uh, the next uh, the next area I wanted to talk about was what are future consideration and next steps. And so I've talked about integrating with other random modules. Um, Randa does have several other types of modules that they've implemented with other states. And typically with other states, they've implemented the core educator licensor and then looked at adding the other ones. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing the big bang approach in terms of getting all the modules. You know, I think getting the core of what we did was a great approach and it allowed us to uh, be um, a lot more familiar with the application and then look at adding uh, others as we uh, as we move forward, um, uh, you know, in the next year or two. And, um, you know, for the next steps, uh, also data modernization. So uh, like I talked about before, the back end will be uh, assessed and decommissioning of MSIS is, you know, what we have planned in our strategy. Uh, once we have the vendor board for the data analysis, um, we would determine based on a recommended solution what that looks like. And then we would be looking at possibly moving forward with another RFP for system implementation and a software uh, application for the data modernization effort. Um, and I've talked about that here at the bottom, the last uh, point. Um, so that, that concludes the you know, overview the um, uh, next steps as well as the status. And so, um, you know, I'm gonna get back to your question. So I'm happy to, happy to answer this for you. Well, a, a comment first, and this is to, to everyone there. Uh, I just recently renewed my uh, educator licensure and it was smooth as frog silk. It was just absolutely uh, amazing. I had my uh, certificate back within an hour, my, you know, so that could not have been faster and easier. And I just want to also compliment the staff. I know they were incredibly understaffed for a great part of the summer, but they couldn't be both the people in the office particularly, but also the people who responded to emails. Uh, I was having one issue. And um, yeah, so kudos up, big kudos. It was really, it's quite extraordinary. Um, and But my one thing about this system, it is great. Uh, and if you address this or this isn't the place to address this, just let me know and we I will move on. But my understanding is that the maintenance part, the yearly maintenance part of it is substantially, well, quite a bit more than had been originally um, anticipated. And um, I'm just concerned of where those you're looking to get those funds. As I say, if that's not for this group, that's fine. I'll find out later. But um, a, is, am I correct in my understanding? And B, do, is there an uh, idea moving forward? Thank you. I, I can take that one, Sam, if you want. Uh, Representative Funk, um, one of the things that I've had to do since I've been here is try to uh, obviously figure out all the contractual obligations that we have, where things have come from, um, and where we're going with those. Uh, in regard to the maintenance of that particular system, um, I believe everything was originally uh, done in the contract um, per that agreement um, correctly. Um, there is some, there certainly are some funds that need to be expended annually for that maintenance. 
Um, but it's not just maintenance for the help desk and things of that nature. It's uh, this is a hosted system, so it is on those sites. Um, that all being said, uh, we're still trying to qualify all that so we know exactly how much those dollars are going to be and to make sure that we are spending those monies wisely. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, both, everyone on this. You're very welcome. All right. Um, we good? Are we good there, Zam? I think um, the system has been well received, and and I'm glad that your experience, representative, was wonderful and simple. Uh, we're on the backside. Um, you know, we're sometimes we're like ducks. Everything looks like it's good, but under the water, we're paddling like crazy, trying to make sure that we solve things and and get things uh, handled here on our end. And uh, I can certainly attribute a lot of that um, being done and accomplished by both Zam and Bitsy. They're um, both very outstanding uh, PMs and making sure that things are moving and getting done uh, very well. So we certainly appreciate their help. Um, with that, Zam, I think we're good there. Um, Bitsy's up and um, I've known... I've had, I don't know if it's unfortunate for Bitsy and been my pleasure to have been around here for, well, for crying out loud, over 30 years. Um, I went to school with Bitsy at Carroll College, go Saints, and uh, just wanted to say I was really pleased and happy to see that she was still working here at OPI um, as a consultant, and the work that she does is wonderful. Um, as the superintendent said, the single sign-on kind of fell into her lap. And she took it on and ran with it and has been, um, you know, one of the, I guess you could say one of the gold stars we've got going. So um, with that, Mitzi, I'll let you take it away. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Um, <clears throat> let me share my screen and hopefully you will all see it. Come on. We're good. Got it. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, so uh, I'm a Midwestern girl. Uh, fell in love with Montana when I was 12. So when I looked for colleges, I knew Chris was going to be at Carroll. So I went there, go Saints. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and since then, I've bought a piece of land and raised five kids at the end of a dirt road and moved on to grandkids and have some animals and love this, love this uh, uh, beautiful, beautiful place. We're so, so lucky to be in. Um, I actually, when I was in school, was gonna be a high school teacher in the uh, math and physics arenas. Uh, landed in IT because IT became a thing at some point there and uh, uh, was fortunate enough to get this uh, contract through my company, uh, which at the time was Northrop Grumman. Um, my company has changed four times in the time I've been there, um, changed names. So we changed the sign and keep doing our jobs. Done a lot of work in health and human services arena um, through through uh, Northrop Grumman and Periton, BDM and TRW prior to that, um, and worked the gamut of uh, uh, systems um, from business acquisition to, to mission assurance across the country to some corporate positions with Six Sigma with, um, you know, project management, testing training, you know, database administration, you name it. It's uh, been quite a, a, a ride, fun ride. This contract here at the OPI has been going for over eight years now with helping, um, like uh, Chris, I believe, mentioned and, and the superintendent in school nutrition programs, ultimately, um, where we implemented some things that led into this um, single sign-on project. Um, so as you can see on the front page, um, it looks simple from the outside. It's not simple on the inside. Like Chris said, we're, we're scrambling behind the scenes to make sure everything works right and looks easy for you guys. So we have implemented a, a, a login page for those, uh, you know, we took, we took a look at those 70 systems Chris mentioned and said, okay, what can we do with each of these systems to move them into a single sign-on type of situation? Um, a, a number of those systems are in-house built and a number are vendor or vendor hosted, vendor created or vendor hosted um, systems. And there's a difference there with what you have to do them with them behind the scenes, if you can even do anything with them behind the scenes to bring them into single sign-on. So um, we started with um, 
our, our uh, you can see that the, uh, the portal then, if you log on on this page, and we've provided a few little helpful things right here to reset passwords, um, turn in user access request forms for those data owners who want this out there. And then uh, we have a frequently asked questions document to help people from the outside of the portal. Um, we have inside the portal, when a person logs on, they get a personalized view, which is what this right side is. And most people do not have 31 applications that they uh, access. So that's what's up on the screen right here is kind of the everything view. Um, but what people get when they log on is a personalized portal that um, shows them what they have. So um, it was about sometime in late February, I want to say, that we were asked to address um, a secure single sign-on portal that eases the OPI system's users' burden for access to OPI applications. Um, and that's when the work began to uh, try to create benefits for the customers that simplify access by using modern technology, secure our data by using uh, better, by using more modern technology, try to provide one URL to remember to access uh, allowed OPI software applications. There are some challenges to putting it all in single sign-on. Uh, some of those uh, technical challenges, and I can address a couple of those. Um, we want one username and password at that one URL to remember um, so that you access, all, uh, again, all allowed OPI software applications. Um, and, and when I say allowed OPI software applications, I mean those that a person has access to via, via their security settings. Um, it personalizes each user's experience, like I mentioned. Um, and then for our security team, it puts access in. Uh, uh, when they have to go set up users, puts it into one place and, and one methodology. Um, the uh, password reset can be done by users. They can select their own uh, password uh, that works then across the portal for all systems. And um, the help desk doesn't have to be involved in that if, uh, you know, unless somebody runs into an issue trying to reset their password. Um, there's a feedback loop that we integrated that was also part of the data modernization effort by the OPI. Um, it's a send feedback for each application that we integrated um, that's personalized for each application, goes to the data owner of that system at the OPI and allows end users to give positive or negative feedback or, or submit ideas about the application itself. So um, that was also part of this project. Um, we integrated user access request forms for a one-stop access shop, so to speak. Um, and there are some data owners who don't want their user access forms out there. It's a convenience that we built in for um, those data owners, system owners who wanted to have that out there. Um, and we're not changing that process. We just, you know, provided the forms. Um, the um, the log there are logs that we built in to. Um, for audit purposes that track who's logged in into what systems, how they came into the system, you know, via what operating system, what device, that kind of thing. Um, so we have those available. And then um, we are, our password reset now capitalizes on the password definitions and uh, automated logouts maintained in Active Directory uh, per the state of Montana rules for security. Um, and that's, that's very important to have those in place as well. Um, the system was built to, uh, uh, in a manner that the logon information is all encrypted and passes that information around in an encrypted manner around to the uh, different systems to utilize and assign the appropriate roles for people um, going into those systems so that um, the, the people can do the work they need to do in each system. Um, we have our plan timeline right here. And um, like I said, it started kind of around the end of February, middle of March. Um, and uh, we did a, a bunch of work to the point where we have, um, in June, we put out a pilot where we put the school nutrition programs out there, MAPS and DCA, if you're familiar with those, the uh, agreement and payment system for school lunches, and then direct cert for free, uh, direct certification for free meals for, um, for students. Those went live about mid-June. 
and it was uh, really smooth. And then in uh, about you know, July 11th, 12th in there, we went uh, with the bulk of the applications that we had converted into single sign-on. 58% of the applications at that point were in single sign-on. Um, of those 70 systems, we discovered some are just background databases. They don't have any user interface. Uh, we don't have to address those for single sign-on. So it reduced our load to 40-ish you know, versus 70-ish. Um, there were some that were um, uh, you know, sunsetted databases and things like that as well. So that was a, a quite an analysis project to complete that. And, but we ended up with 58% mid-July. Um, in the month of August, which we're right at the end of, believe it or not, um, we uh, moved in another uh, three apps. So 60, uh, we're up to 65%. And um, the reason that we had to put, do some of these apps later than others is due to the customer usage of the applications. We couldn't um, we couldn't throw something in the middle of heavy processing time for certain applications. So um, I'll show you in a minute the detail on that and what has moved and what has yet to move. Um, um, we have we are targeting March of 2023 to be done with um, the project. Um, We've left the, the harder ones, the more difficult ones here at the end. We've been having some ongoing discussions with vendors while we've been working through the other, um, converting the other applications to single sign-on. Um, what our impact has been is uh, we now have approximately 3,500 end users on single sign-on. Um, we have moved all of these applications that you see here to the single sign-on portal. Um, the ones, let's see, Jobs for Teachers just went yesterday and payment went just yesterday as well, right here. Renewal units will go next week. Um, that's a professional development or RUPS, I guess is the, the fond name of the system. Um, and transportation will go next month. Um, there are a few here listed in gray. And those are, we've also moved to the single sign-on portal, but with those, we have to log on an additional time. We've just put them out there because they're just a small user base and it's easy to access them from the portal. Um, we were exploring the licensure project. So this is one of those technical difficulties that we run into. We have to look at ROI, uh, return on investment, when we are uh, determining whether some of these hosted systems or vendor created systems that we now host um, are worth the, the, the money we would have to pay uh, or expend to convert them to single sign-on. And when we're working with other vendors, there's sometimes also, uh, they don't have the, the technical ability to change it to single sign-on to integrate with our single sign-on process um, because it just may not be something they do or they've done, uh, or, or like I've said, the price tag might be exorbitant. And if we can only move a small percentage of users to single sign-on for the price, that's um, not the best way to spend the data modernization budget. Uh, MAPS, the agreement and payment system, is one we were able to move with, a, with the cooperation of the vendor. Um, and it went very quickly. And, and I, I appreciate all their efforts on that, too, to integrate that. Um, the, uh, you know, and again, looking at sustainability, you know, we have to make sure we're working in a manner that this, this uh, system is sustainable by the OPI um, over the long haul. Uh, upgradable, if that's what part of the sustainment and such. Um, the applications we have yet to address are um, Advanced Driver Education, AIM, which is Infinite Campus, um, 21st Century, um, Cases, eGrants, Gems. You can read the, the list here. Um, some of these, like I said, we, we have addressed in some manner. Uh, we haven't necessarily made a final decision or we may be putting them off beyond the March 2023 date uh, for reasons of other data modernization efforts that are going on. Um, as data modernization efforts with all these systems are 
completed or addressed, started, there will be a component of them where they have to address the single sign-on um, so that we can keep everything in sync and, and utilized uh, as a integrated systems. Um, any questions right there from anyone? That's good stuff, Betsy, thank you. Yep, um, the last thing I wanted to show is the usage. I know we're coming up on noon here. So uh, these are some of the charts that we've put in there and you see these uh, clicks down here. Those are um, links that dive deeper into the data and can show us individuals that have logged on and uh, where they're coming in from, what application was accessed via what operating system and so on. This is data, dated, so we can actually look at a range of data to um, see just how utilized the system is. And you can see we have quite a bit. Um, like I said, the maps and direct cert came on in June. So we have, we have more data for them than we have for the other systems that came on in July and August. But you can see people are accessing the systems um, via single sign-on. And uh, when I look at this and I think of the number of calls we've had, I take a great deep breath and say, thank goodness, you know, it really has been a, a pretty smooth transition um, with change. Of course, there's always, you know, a few little, a few little pieces of confusion or hiccups along the way, and um, and we work to resolve those as quickly as possible. And that is it for me. Thank you. Thanks, Bitsy. Are there any question questions for Bitsy at all? All right. I don't see any hands, super. Well, um, if you do have any further questions in regard to, to any one of those uh, um, presentations, please shoot them our way and we'll get those answered. Um, Eric, I wanna thank you for uh, volunteering to help us with the power school, uh, that's great. And I wanted to open this up for the member forum. Uh, we're just kind of following along with the same uh, agenda layout that was used previously. And so I'll open up the floor to anybody that has anything that they want to contribute, ask or, or have us research for you. No? Chris, this is Scott. Yes. A uh, question for Betsy. Uh, with regard to data reporting this year, I know that we're going to be required to do CRDC reporting again. And I just want to make sure that everybody's aware that <clears throat> at least it used to be 684 questions per school for federal comp compliance. And so we had reached out to the campus and they had developed an algorithm to be able to pull that data so that we wouldn't have to sit because it's about it's between 40 and 60 hours to do that by hand and i can say that definitively because i've done that before and uh and so um i don't know what what districts that aren't using it campus are doing but uh it was so popular among the superintendents groups across the state that they sent um one of their data integration specialists, Marianne Skinner, all over the state for the infant campus schools to be able to know how to access uh, that reporting element within the campus. And that, so that's something that I think everybody just needs to be mindful of. We did it last year and we're going to be required to do it again this year. Super. Um, we'll get uh, our AIM team. We hired uh, our AIM manager who is overseeing the infant campus um application and, and system uh nicole thuat and we'll marla and i will get with her and we'll catch up with you mr kenny and we'll make sure that we can get those things squared away and and uh, if we need to help out in any way we can we'll do that thank you you're very welcome uh eric had Put in the chat, uh, PowerSchool has a built-in CRDC, CRDC export that handles a lot of that. So super, that's great, Eric, thank you. Anything else? Okay, I don't know that we have any public on. 
uh, at this point for public comment. <clears throat> I'll open up the floor for that. Um, not hearing anything. Uh, future agenda topics that anyone or everyone would like to hear about or, or discuss. Does anybody have any recommendations for that? Maybe just to roll out how to do it to um, the different schools and uh, what kind of training is, you know, what you're kind of thinking ballpark and what it's going to take to get to know the, the system. Uh, Paul, is that in, in regard to the data modernization or infinite campus in specific? Uh, just, I guess, uh, more towards when we get to the end of this and we're actually trying to put <clears throat> Wow, will look like. You bet. Um, we can we can work on that. Uh, that's going to be one of the aspects of our system integration uh, with our integrator and how we go about doing that. And I know Zam and, um, and Bitsy have been working with a lot of the field to make sure that those individuals that have needed training, uh, we've worked on um, some guides for those things and uh, we had helped us set up so people could call in if they were having trouble um, but we will definitely make sure that there's a training plan in regard to whatever systems are going to be built and, and utilized out there so we want to make sure everybody can drive right okay anyone else Uh, superintendent wanted me to throw this pitch out there is uh, for a topic next time would be uh, requirements for math within the state of Montana. We have uh, just from a discussion point, we are required uh, to provide two years of math and we wanted to see what your thoughts were in regard to that. Um, so if you don't mind, we'll throw that one on there as well. Okay, any others? Okay, no, we're eating in the lunchtime here. My apologies for that. Um, so we've been taking notes. Uh, that was Marlon and Tristan's job to take notes to make sure that we got everything covered for everyone. Um, what I wanted to do was throw the recommendation out there for the next meeting to be November 16th, which I believe is also a Wednesday. And I don't know if this time works well for everyone. And we can also uh, start it earlier or at a different time and whether this venue works well for everyone or not. So any suggestions or recommendations in that regard? None? It works fine for me, as does the 16th, <laughs> okay. all, all of the above. All right, great, thank you. We will do that, Representative Funk. So um, she stated in the chat, sometimes they have a leg training quite soon after elections. So we might need to check with staff there. So we can certainly do that to make sure we don't interrupt that, um, that time and effort. So um, I do want to throw this out there too. I'm, um, sometimes I run around the state uh, for different uh, travel experiences and whatnot and so if i'm in any of those areas where you folks are i'd love to uh, sit down and talk with you face to face and and meet you um i am um so off the record i know this is recorded but off the record i'm a beer drinker so um, we can do that or coffee tea you know anything of that nature i'd love to sit down and and uh meet you and get your your two cents uh, I met with Mr. Kenny this summer, um, actually about a month ago, and you know I had a great time. So uh, I appreciate all the effort and the things that you do, and am looking forward to your input and lively discussion into all the things that we can do and help you with. So um, because I'm new, you can pick on me and take advantage of that, and I can, you know, I still have a few mulligans that I can utilize. 
So I have no problem going and asking questions and making sure that we're doing the right thing and trying to do the best for our Montana students. So I'm really excited about this group. Um, I was kind of nervous, but you guys are really quiet. So that's probably not a bad thing for me. So thank you very much for, for taking it easy on me. Um, if there isn't anything else, um, we'll adjourn. Um, and I'll try to send out an agenda and get your guys' feedback on that. Um, Representative Moffitt will, or uh, Funk will check to see uh, if there's anything legislative going on that day. If not, we'll send out a uh, proposed agenda for everyone to give us some feedback on. And if there's other topics or things that do come to mind afterwards, um, please feel free. You have our emails. Um, you can send them to myself, Tristan, uh, Zam, Bitsy, or Marla, and we'd be happy to put those on the agenda. So thank you, everyone. We appreciate your time and, and all the things you do as well. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye.